One of the first differences in iOS 11 is unlocking with the home button. Traditionally in iOS you would unlock by swiping and that has been changed now to unlock with the home button. So before you are ready to actually engage the home screen it will ask you to push the home button and that will allow you to access the iPad. So once you're on the home screen there are a few key pieces and updates that are available for you um, and the first and the most important probably is the dock. Now the dock is available at any time. It's also customizable but you'll see that it is consistent and persistent at the bottom. So what that means is any application that you actually place on the dock will remain there until you remove it. So if you would like to customize your dock, let's say that I want to remove Google Drive, all I have to do is place my finger on it and move it to the home screen. If I want to add Google Drive, I place my finger on it and move it to the dock. You do not have to wait for the apps to jiggle in the traditional Apple sense. Normally if you wanted to move an application, you would have to hold down, wait for the app to jiggle and then move it. For the dock, all you have to do is put your finger on it and move it off or on the dock. So let's say that I'm in an application uh, such as Safari and I want to access an app on my dock and I want to switch to that app very quickly. If I just swipe up lightly from the bottom, I can then choose any other application that is on the dock. So maybe I want to open Google Docs and I want to continue to work on uh, a document that I have there. So I just swiped up lightly from the bottom and you'll see that I can access any of those apps and switch very quickly and very easily. Now if I want to access the control center from this I can swipe up from the bottom all the way to the top and you'll see I now see the app switcher view and my control center. I can also double click the home button and that will also take me to the control center if I need to be able to get there quickly or easily I can do either motion um, that I would need to do. Another great thing is you can close multiple applications at once. So you'll see I have Playgrounds and Files open. I can grab both of those and swipe up and it will close them both at one time. So it's much quicker and more efficient for you to be able to close apps. The other thing is if I have a bunch of different applications open at once, they will all show up and be in those panels. And you'll see that they, they are paneled across to the left exactly like you would have whenever you're working with your Mac. So there are a lot of similarities now in iOS 11 to your Mac. And these are specific to the iPad. If you are an iPhone user, iOS 11 operates slightly different in, uh, or on the iPhone. So if I want to explore the control center, I have my usual control center options. My connectivity, my sounds, my alarms, uh, the screen brightness and volume can be adjusted with the slider. You also see that I have my airplay and mirroring available. But the nice thing about iOS 11 is the control center is customizable. So if I go into settings and I look on the left hand side underneath notifications you'll see control center. I can customize my controls and add or remove things that I would like to be able to do from the control center. Now you will notice that I have added screen recording. We're going to look at screen recording in an upcoming video, but now on my iPad and iOS 11, I can record my screen and audio all at once without having to connect it to a MacBook. That is a changing piece of technology for the classroom because students can now utilize the iPad without having to use another app to record their work and to show what they've learned and how they're mastering that. The other thing that is new is a, are ways that you can switch applications. Now you can use very similar skills that you've had in the past. So for instance, if I go into an application I had opened like Swift Playgrounds and I want to switch to another app that's open, I can use my four fingers and swipe in the direction that the app may be. So you'll see that this is my settings app. Using my four finger multi-touch swipe I can change applications. That's been standard in iOS. Another thing that I can do is use my control center. So if I swipe up and I go to my control center, I can jump into settings directly from my control center. And then I can also use my dock. So if I have it in my dock and I'm in an application, remember that I can jump immediately into that application just by choosing it from the dock. The other thing that's new is, is that you can move multiple apps now. Before, if you wanted to move multiple applications, you had to do them one at a time. But if you hold down on the application until they jiggle, you will now see your standard ability to delete or move. So let's say that I wanted to move three of the apps from this page to another page. Well, if I grab this app and I drag it down so I'm holding it, I can add as many applications as I would like. You'll see there's now a four. I'm going to move these four apps over to the second page and I'm going to drop them in. 
Now the one thing right now that you are not able to do is immediately folder them. If you would like to folder apps, you, you can still do that, but it doesn't work as directly as moving them does. So I would encourage you to explore that a little bit to see what that experience is like for you. But you are able to do this now, and that speeds up your time in actually moving applications across the pages you have on your iPad home screen. The one other option that I want to show you is shutting down your iPad. Before, the only way to shut down your iPad was the power button, which is located at the top right of the iPad. That is still standard. But now you can actually shut down your iPad within settings. So if you go into your settings, and you go to your general location, and scroll to the bottom on the right, you will see that shutdown is an option from within settings. Now this is nice because there may be a time that the case that's on the iPad or maybe a student isn't able quite to, to turn it off that way, they can go directly into settings and shut it down without having to worry about the button. That's it for updates to the home screen. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and contact us at any time.